Hi everyone, this is Mujda from Persian Awards. I have a uh, really dear guest today, Mr. Mike Schneider, Member of Parliament of Green Party of Ontario, representing Gulf uh, for Gulf. Mr. Schneider, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. If you can please introduce yourself and tell us about yourself a little bit. Well, Moshe, first of all, it's just a real honor to, to join you and just congratulations uh, to the Persian Awards and having this international opportunity to connect with people across a lot of borders and a lot of space. And, um, you know, I think the last 16 months obviously has been very hard on all of us with COVID, but it has presented some opportunities like this for us to to connect and and so I I'm, I deeply appreciate the opportunity to join you today. Uh, you. I think first and foremost, I'm a, I'm a husband, father, um, longtime small business owner, and a nonprofit leader before going into politics. Uh, mm -hmm. My background is I, I grew up on a farm in rural Western Kansas and uh, immigrated to Canada uh, in the mid 1990s and moved here for love and just fell in love with Ontario and have started uh, a number of uh, food businesses and nonprofit organizations promoting local sustainable food and farmers. Always been interested in politics and mm -hmm. uh, was inspired to get involved in the Green Party because of the party's position on addressing the, the climate and environmental crisis, on addressing issues around social justice, particularly income and racial inequality. And I'm a strong supporter in strengthening Canada's democracy. And when I'm not doing politics, I, I love to go cycling, hiking, um, running. I like to spend a lot of time in nature. And uh, I have two daughters and uh, my youngest daughter and I go on a canoe trip every summer. We've done it nine years in a row. Uh, she's 16 now, so we've been doing it for a long time. And uh, so we just got back from our annual canoe trip recently. So it was, it was a good experience to disconnect and get away for a while. Great, thank you so much. You, answer, you uh, answered my next question that why uh, <laughs> coming from farm to politics, you answered it. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm so happy that you had a good time with your daughter as well, that's great. <laughs> um, it was not the summer that we were expecting, but um, you found a way to just spend it with your family, that's great. Um, Mr. Steiner, you are an immigrant and you mentioned that you uh, you immigrated to Canada mid-90. Uh, so can you tell us about a, a little bit about um, the immigrant that they are coming from different culture and different art and different, they are different in a different society, how they can adopt themselves and how you as a politician, that you politician person that you've always been thinking about it, how you can just support these kind of immigrants? Well, first of all, I think one of the things that I love about living in Canada, and I think one of Canada's greatest strengths, is our diversity. And uh, I will have to say that my immigrant experience was much easier than most. Uh, I grew up speaking English, though I will have to admit my French is still not very good. I, I keep working on it. Uh, and also, um, you know, uh, I'll have to acknowledge that that having you know white skin. Uh, made that immigrant experience much different from people who um, may come from a country that English as a, is a sec or French or is a second language, and people who come from uh, racialized backgrounds. Uh, but I think you know one of the things that you know I, I think we need to stress is that the vibrancy of our communities, the prosperity of our economy. Um, coming out of the food system, just the, the diversity of tastes and, and just cuisine in Canada um, is, is so much stronger and so much better because we are, uh, we have so many people who have immigrated here from other places and are figuring out how we can all live together. I do think it's important that especially those of us like myself who are settlers on this land, that we recognize uh, the indigenous peoples who were the first uh, inhabitants of this land and have lived in Canada for thousands and thousands of years uh, before settlers from other places arrived. And that we acknowledge the importance of 
indigenous culture, indigenous teachings, uh, and the first peoples on this land as part of that vibrancy of having, having uh, you know, a diverse uh, Canada. And I also want to say, though, that as much as we celebrate our diversity and as much as we recognize how it makes Canada a stronger country, I think it's also important, particularly for people who look like me, uh, to speak out against what I've seen as a disturbing trend over the, uh, which is, you know, rising levels of, you know, racism, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, other forms of hate that, um, that I think it's important for all of us, regardless of our background across cultures and ethnicity and religion, uh, et cetera, that we all stand together in solidarity as Canadians to stand up against those small but vocal elements of our society that don't welcome diversity uh, in the same way that, that I do and that I think most Canadians do. You talk about diversity. You talked about uh, that we are living in a country that we all are together and respect each other. As a politician person that you are coming from food and you mentioned something that is really uh, kind of like, it's a beautiful um, like in definition, food as a diversity. Now, mm -hmm. what is the importance of uh, art and culture uh, to connect uh, between these kind of immigrants, citizens, and whoever wants to live together? What is the importance of it? Yeah, so I believe art and culture is just vital to our quality of life, the vibrancy of our communities, the, the livability of our communities, just, um, you know, art and culture touches the heart, the soul, the, the mind, uh, and, and it also creates um, opportunities to, to learn from each other and to also then meld and bring together different arts and cultures to create something new and, and, and innovative. And so, you know, I think one of my roles uh, as an MPP is to, to really, you know, be a voice for arts and culture. I, I'm very lucky living in Guelph. Guelph is a community that has a very strong music scene and a very strong arts community. Uh, and so, you know, I think one of the things I've been really advocating for is more government financial support to support the arts, uh, to support artists uh, themselves, arts and culture in general, particularly community-based arts and culture, because it's just so vital uh, to our quality of life. And I think the pandemic in particular, I think we have to acknowledge is uh, especially um, uh, disproportionately affected a, a number of artists, particularly those uh, in 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 live performance, so music and 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 um, uh, stage theater and other live performances, where it's been more of a challenge for people to gather. And I know in some of the conversations I've had um, with artists that um, the, now more than ever, uh, I think we need public support for the arts and for culture. Uh, and just even in my own community. So for example, we have a multicultural festival every year in, in you know, uh, one of the parks in Guelph. And the fact that we haven't been able to meet in person for two years in a row now, um, you know, I think that's, you know, it, it, it's affected people um, because that human connection is so important. And that human connection through arts and culture is so vital, especially given the, the diversity of our country. Um, great. So I'm sure that everybody misses seeing each other, like in person. Mm -hmm. You mentioned about artists that they have live performance, and you mm -hmm. talked about uh, supporting. Uh, and another thing that was really important, it was my other question about financially supporting. Mm -hmm. How are you doing that? Like, how are you supporting these people? Like about even public, uh, any kind of like a public event or financially, because when we are talking about art and culture, especially in any community, I'm talking about Persian community connecting to other yes. community. Uh, but we need like, uh, how can you as a politician person support them and do the mm -hmm. financial part? Yeah, so, 
um, I don't want to make this too Ontario specific because I know you have a wider audience. Uh, but one of the things I've been really pushing for is increased funding to the Ontario Arts Council. Uh, and, and I would argue, you know, provincial uh, and federal arts funding is just vital. And, and, um, and the payback on that. So sometimes people say, well, you know, why should government be supporting arts and culture? The payback on that in terms of economic prosperity, quality of life, um, uh, recognizing and bringing different cultures together, um, just the vibrancy and livability of our communities, you know, just fun for, for people of all ages, um, just the role that arts and culture play. And so I've been really pushing hard at Queen's Park uh, for increased government funding for the arts. Uh, and then also, I think it's important just for all community members, but especially those of us who are elected officials to promote and, and celebrate and use our platforms, whether it's through, you know, social media or traditional media or, or, you know, awards ceremonies like this. And, you know, thank you again to the Persian community for, for bringing this innovative, um, ceremony together uh, and, and making it so available to people uh, um, uh, internationally. Um, but th that is so, th these types of opportunities are just so important for us to have a better understanding of each other, to build more caring and inclusive communities and, and to build the kind of communities and neighborhoods that I think we all wanna live in and thrive in and arts and culture are vital to that. And that's why I'm a strong supporter of funding for the arts and culture, but also having elected representatives like myself promote um, artists and arts and culture organizations. Uh, you're so happy to have you. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Schneider, you talked about promoting art and culture artists. Um, what is your idea about local media? Because nowadays mm -hmm. there's a lot of social media, so you can, mm -hmm. you can talk about it anywhere. But there is something about local media when they are talking, when they are promoting, uh, it, it's empowered the um, art and culture and artists. What do you think about this local media? Yeah, I think one of the very uh, disturbing trends we've seen over the last 20 years in particular, but especially over the last decade, uh, is just the decline in the number of local media organizations. Um, so, for example, uh, you know, I live in a city of 130,000 people, and we don't have a daily newspaper anymore. I mean, we have online newspapers, we have a weekly uh, newspaper, uh, but those types of, of um, local media is vitally important. Uh, I was just visiting Peterborough, which is a community of around 90,000 people, about an hour and a half outside of Toronto. And um, I was meeting with somebody who had for 30 years uh, produced an art and culture publication, kind of like local newspaper slash magazine, and because of COVID had to shut it down. And so I think COVID has even uh, accelerated that because there's just less advertising revenue, less events happening to, to promote. And so I think that loss of uh, local media is it, it, it is negative. Um, and you are starting to see some instances where new and innovative forms of local media are, are, are emerging. So podcasting being one of them, there's some fantastic uh, podcasts, even in my, in my community of Guelph and in other places that are very local focused. Uh, you are seeing the introduction of some hyper-local, even printed newspapers on a very small scale. So I do think that creative people um, are finding ways to help rebuild and reimagine local media. So I'm hopeful, but also um, concerned that we have lost a lot of local media over the last two decades. Um. So you are, as a politician, you're going to support them because we need them, right? We need them to go back to, yeah. Um, let's go to the uh, academic part. 
um, there is a lot of uh, people, there is a lot of immigrants that they are coming to this country for continuing their lesson. They want to graduate and mm -hmm. they want to just uh, be as a kind of professor or they want to work in the academic part. What is your uh, like support as a politician person for these people and like adjusting themselves to being a good after graduation, going to the mm -hmm. faculties and uh, stay there and work there? Yeah, so first of all, I would say that, um, you know, our academic institutions, particularly at the post-secondary, so colleges and universities, I mean, obviously having an international um, uh, mix of both academics and students, I think is vital to the vibrancy and just the learning uh, that people experience to be exposed to different cultures, different languages, different ways of thinking, different cult different cultural and lived experiences is vitally important. And I would say one of the things that I feel so lucky living in a community like Guelph with the University of Guelph there, and this is the same for many university and college communities, you know, around across the country and around the world, is that you have so many people from around the world studying and being professors and researchers there. And, and I think it only strengthens um, the quality of research, the quality of education, the economic and again, community vibrancy and livability. And so I, I think it's vital for our colleges and universities in particular to have those international connections to make sure that we are hiring diverse faculty. Uh, and and um, the one concern I would have, at least in the Canadian context, and I'll specifically talk about Ontario, is that because um, tuition for Canadian students is are regulated, uh, but they're not tuition's not for international students, and so increasingly there is a um, a disturbing dis you know um, difference in what international students pay versus what Canadian students pay for college and university, and a lot of that is come out of necessity because provincial governments, especially the Ontario government, has really pulled back the amount of public funding available to our universities and colleges. And, and so I'm concerned about that and just the effect that has on um, economic prospects for international students, uh, mental health, the pressure it puts on students, um, the pressure it puts on their families to, to, to finance it and afford it. And so I think that's something we need to be looking at to, to you know, look at ways to help close that gap. Uh, and also, and I think a big part of that is having um, the Ontario government, I'll speak in the Ontario context, government putting more money into public education so it's truly public education. So you're talking about hope, that's great. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to know that we talked about a diversity and um, the, the beautiful of being living in Canada is just you can taste a lot of different food and you can know different culture. How can you as a politician person that you are interested, I can say that you are supporting, um, connecting these communities, like Persian communities, they have Persian awards, they have Chinese community, they have uh, Indian community, how you like we can support them to connect it together and promote and empower their Alton culture in the society. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I've been such a strong supporter for festivals like the Multicultural Festival in my community of Guelph, uh, because it brings um, people from all backgrounds together to talk about how we celebrate Persian culture, Chinese culture, um, Haitian culture, you know, um, different religions like Muslim, Hindu, Sikh, etc. Um, and so I think those types of festivals that have a multicultural experience and in terms of arts, culture, and food performances, uh, I think are vitally important. That being said, I think um, uh, events like this that's focused on uh, Persian culture and Persian awards is really important too. So I wouldn't want to lose um, you know, the, 
Chinese New Year celebration I go to or the um, you know, Persian awards ceremony I'm at right now that, that celebrate uh, individual culture. So I think it's important to have both uh, because this gives us an opportunity to have a more in-depth experience uh, than you would maybe in one that's dispersed and multicultural, but I think both are vital. And I, I want to, and maybe this is my own bias given my background in food, but I don't think I can overstate, I think, how important food is to bring people together. If you think about so many of our family, religious, community experiences that do bring people together is oftentimes around food and around meals. And so I think one of the things that's really important, and that's something I've worked on over the years, and we've certainly seen uh, improvements uh, here in Ontario, is just making sure that we grow food locally that is culturally appropriate and culturally diverse so that people can have access to tastes from their home country if they, if they have immigrated here or to have access to food that, you know, that's appropriate for their culture, uh, their ethnicity, their religion, et cetera. And then to see the blending of those different tastes and foods into sort of international or fusion cuisine to, 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 to make something new that combines different tastes, uh, I, I think is really important. And so one of the things I've, I've done over the years is to really work hard to make sure that um, new Canadians in particular have access to land to grow food uh, and to grow food that um, you know, brings a taste of home, but to also encourage um, uh, you know, uh, you know, a diverse range of Canadian farmers to grow col uh, food that, uh, that represents different cultures so we have access to locally grown, uh, culturally diverse foods. Um, you talk about food a lot. That's that's <laughs> that's a really good. I can say it's a really beautiful definition uh, to be uh, with uh, uh, to be with uh, like uh, uh, comparing with art and culture and the diversity. Uh, Mr. Schneider, uh, you talked about uh, Persian awards. You talked about uh, what we are doing. I want to know your opinion about us. Like people like me, including myself, that we're working voluntarily in Persian awards. We want to empower art and culture. We want to talk about uh, the what we what we brought from Persian uh, community, and we wanted to show it to the world. What is your idea about us? So first of all, Moshe, I just I want to just deeply thank you and your team for putting on uh, um, this event. And, um, you know, uh, Persian culture is one of the most ancient cultures. And, and so, um, and Persian culture has brought so many wonderful things to academics, arts, culture, food, um, community building, architecture. Uh, and so to have the opportunity to, um, uh, acknowledge that, learn, celebrate, connect, um, I think is vitally important. And so, you know, the fact that you, I think in your preface to that question, you said, you know, a lot of us are here as volunteers. And so, you know, I guess from, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you and all the volunteers for taking the time to do this because it's so valuable and so important. And, and I would just say, I, I would like to think that um, governments, and this is something I'll certainly advocate for, will, will um, financially support the kinds of efforts that the Persian Awards are putting forward and, and other similar efforts. Um, because um, you can't always run these type of events purely on volunteers. Like you need resources as well, and people need to earn a living. Uh, and, and sometimes I think we underestimate and under undervalue and underpay a, a lot of people in, in, in arts and culture sectors. Um, sometimes, you know, we all too often focus on the handful of 
of artists, particularly in, in music that make a big or in, in film that make a lot of money without realizing that there are thousands and thousands of people in the arts and culture sector, um, including building organizations and putting on awards, uh, events and things like that, that's done at the grassroots and community level that are oftentimes, you know, under-resourced and, and, and relying completely on volunteers. And while I'm a huge supporter of volunteering and I do a ton of volunteering myself, uh, I wanna make sure that these types of events um, have endure and have a permanency to them and having financial resources is important to making sure that happens. Thank you so much, Mr. Shiner. If there, is there anything else that you want to share with Persian Awards family, audience around the world? Yeah, I would just say that. Um, so first of all, again, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been a lot of fun. And <laughs> you're a great interviewer, by the way. Thank um, you. Osha. So uh, so thank you for that. And you know, I would just say that um, you know I, I um, deeply value the contribution that um, Persian culture uh, has contributed around the world, uh, specifically to, to my home here in Canada and, and, and specifically uh, in Ontario. And uh, I think we need to have more events like the Persian Awards for us to all get to know each other better to build bridges. Um, one of the things that happens in my community is the Muslim Society of Guelph has a building bridges event every year that brings people of all mm. cultural backgrounds together around food, by the way, <laughs> around <laughs> dinner. <laughs> you can tell food. I love food. I love food Persian food, by the way. <laughs> but um, but anyway, and and so um, so thank you. Thank you for putting this on. Thank you for inviting me to participate. And Thank you to all, all the volunteers who have made this happen. It's a real honor to join you. Thank you so much. This is Mojda from Persian Awards with Mr. Schneider, member of provincial parliament from Green Party of Ontario representing of Gyalf. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for watching us. Bye-bye. موجده هستم از پرژن وارد جوایز فارسی در ادبیات، موسیقی، هنر، سینما و بزنس. برای مشاهده ویدیوهای جوایز فارسی، چنل یوتیوب ما رو سابسکرایب کنید. زنگوله کنارش رو هم بزنید تا شما اولین نفری باشید که برنامه های ما رو میبینید. ما رو در پیج اینستاگرام از این بالا فالو کنید تا همیشه جدیدترین خبرهای پرژنوارد اولین نفر برای شما برسید.